A pleasant good day to each and everyone. You are viewing This Is Your Season for Change with Pastor Joseph and Daya. How pleasant it is to always be in your company to bring to you the Word of God. Today we are going into the Word of God and we are taking the word from Jeremiah chapter 29, a very familiar passage to many. We are reading from verse 11 to verse 14. The title of this word today is Greater is Coming. It says here in his word, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will bring back you from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord. I will bring you back to a place from which I carried you for into exile. Today, as we go into the word, my heart pant because this word means so much to me as we go through different seasons of our lives. And just like you would visit the physical doctor and he would administer to you different prescription for different situations in your body, so too in the spiritual realm, God gives us prescription of the word in different forms and amounts for our seasons. I believe with all my heart that he's a father who cares and he knows our needs. He's the great physician, the best physician, the one who can give us a complete diagnosis and give us the word that will heal us and heal our situations. Today, I hope this word would heal your situation and it would be the required prescription that you need from our Lord and Savior. Greater is coming. I don't know why I just need to declare that over your life, over your situation, before I begin to teach, but I want to remind you throughout all of this that you're going through, greater is coming. I got comfort while reading this word and doing a study on it, and the part that comforted me the most was, for God knows. He's using Jeremiah just like he's doing this morning, this evening, whatever time you're looking at this video. And just as he used Jeremiah to pen the word, to send to the children of God who were at that time in captivity, they were in exile, they were in a place where they were sent to by God, not by the devil, but by God, he banished them there, and they were not in their normal homeland. And here he told Jeremiah, begin to pen my word of comfort to them, begin to speak to them in a barren place, begin to speak to them in a place that is foreign to them. I want you to give them words of comfort. And this strengthened my spirit that God talks to us in exile, that God talks to us in banished places, that God talks to us in foreign land. Yes, he does. And he doesn't just say anything, but he has the right word for the right time. So he tells Jeremiah, his prophet, he says, pen to them, write to my children, let them know that I have not abandoned them, nor have I forgotten them, but I have a plan for them. Isn't it awesome that we always hear this scripture, but we never realize so much the circumstances that happened actually around this scripture for God or to actually initiate it in a text. It was exile time, it was banishment time. The people was away from their normal way of living and they were in a place of discomfort. And here it is, God sends his prophet to speak into their life. I wanna take that opportunity to tell you that God has sent me to speak into your life. He knows just where you are this morning. He knows just where you're seated tonight. Maybe you are in exile, maybe you are in a banishment place. Maybe you are in a situation that makes you feel like you are in a foreign land. Maybe you are in a situation that looks like it is a form of slavery. Maybe you are in a situation that feels like you have been exiled, but I've come by to tell you greater is coming. 
This word for, I, for God knows comforted me. He says, for I know. You know, so many times we trust in pastors to know for us. We trust in prophets. We trust in witches. Sometimes we trust in friends. Sometimes we trust in parents to tell us the plans for our lives. But this morning I am comforted because God knows. You know, it is an easy thing to rely on man, but man can fail you. Their interpretations can be wrong and even their plans can show up to be misconstrued or wrong motives in the end. So I like to lean on the word of God and that gives us confidence this morning that God says he knows. He makes a bold statement through the writing of Jeremiah and a declaration to indicate and remind us that no matter where we sit today, no matter where we have made our bed, he still has a plan for us. I want you to also know that he has sent his word to his people just as he's sending it today. Yes, he did to remind you that he has not forgotten to you. And yes, our seasons where he sends us at times can look like it's abandoned, but I want to remind you he can still perform miracles. Today he's using me. Thousand years ago he used Jeremiah. 3,000 years ago, if you want, you can say he used Jeremiah, Isaiah, and so forth and so forth. Nevertheless, how much years you want to calculate in between, he keeps using people to get to his people. He says, I know the plans I have for you, my God. He said to them, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hmm. You might be exiled. But I've come by to tell you you're not finished. You might be in the enemy's camp, but I've come by to tell you you're not destroyed. You might be in a bad location, but I've come by to tell you it's God's desire assignment. You might feel like you're in a strange land, but I've come by to tell you there's no place God cannot bless you in. He's writing here to lift your spirit. He's writing here to lift your hope that there is always going to be a way out and you can experience his presence even when you are far away from your homeland. Greater is coming. God has already calculated your expected moment. Isn't that awesome? He told Jeremiah, tell them, I've calculated the future. I know. This is so awesome. You see, you might not calculate yourself. You might not be expecting what you are expecting in the next five years for yourself. But I've come by to tell you that God has already calculated your expectancy of your future. God has already calculated what is going to happen to you and what's not going to happen to you. So my command to you today is trust him. Trust the process that God has calculated your time in the wilderness, your time in exile, and your time of crossing over the Jordan River into Canaan. So as we take time today and we look at the letter that was being written to the children of Israel years ago, today we can look at it in perspective and see that it really does still apply to the modern day church. It still applies to you. It still applies to me. That no matter how old we may get, no matter how long ago the scripture has been written, it remains relevant for our season. Isn't that funny? That no matter how old we get, no matter how old medicine gets, and how old we age, that prescriptions and, and medication prescriptions uh, for different diseases and illnesses does not change. Why do we think that the world would change? No, God remains constant. It worked, for, it worked yesterday, it's going to work today. He says in his, words in his word in Hebrew, he said, He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Just as you would put trust in physical medication, today God wants me to remind you, can you put your trust in his word as he diagnosed your situation in exile and he give you just what you need to tell you live? Breathe again. Don't die in that place. 
greater is coming. Hallelujah. As I ponder on this word, I couldn't help but think about uh, the olive. We see the olive as such an important um, part of Christianity because it's spoken about throughout our biblical history. It is something very potent. It is a very important emblem when we talk about oil, when we talk about anointing. It is something that is used or it is part of our process when we talk about um, healing. We talk about the oil, placing the oil and anointing kings. So the, oil, the olive has been a part of um, biblical history for centuries. And while I was pondering on this word in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 14, what come, came to my mind is the process of the olive. I thought about how expensive this oil is. Have you ever been to the grocery to buy a bottle of olive oil and had to go through the prices and see which brand is cheaper because there is no cheap oil in the process of an olive oil? And somehow when you go through the prices in penny savers, or if you shop at cost cutters, or wherever your, your, your familiar grocery um, shopping place may be, Fewport or Mini Mart, it doesn't matter. When you hit the olive oil shelf, the price goes up. There is no really cheap olive oil. You know why? Because the process of the olive is never cheap. No matter how much the brand would change, you will never find cheap olive oil. And that made me smile. Because sometimes in ministry and in life, we want to cheat the process to have the same results. But then our prices would not be the same. This is the reason why the price of the olive remains constant. Because the process is expensive. Today you might be in exile, but I want to remind you, the process is expensive. And when God is finished with your product, you will have a high price because of your processing. So remember in this word, greater is coming. He knows. He has a plan for you. Don't move until he tells you to. So the first step, if you are into olive oil making, if your life feels like the olive today, the first step of the olive after it is picked and harvested from the tree would be the cleaning. Or some prefer to say it's the season of the shaking. This olive at this point in time would have preferred to be on the tree like you today. You would have preferred to never be picked or harvested because the amount of pressing and squeezing you've been through since you've been picked you preferred if your life had just remained on the tree. But what a waste would your life be? You see, the olive on the tree has a shortened lifespan. Remaining on the tree means that either the birds would pick the olive or the olives would fall to the ground and that would be the end of the olive's lifespan. Until it falls to the ground, a seed comes again and probably then another tree. But where did the olive production go from the fruit that was produced? That would have died unless eaten immediately. But if you want olive to really outlive its life on the tree, the olive must be processed. Somebody say, I am being processed. But I am confident, greater is coming. So in the cleaning, what they do is they remove the excess and the extra stuff that comes with the olive during harvesting. Stuff like stems, stones, dirt, pesticides, and rocks and sand, anything that would cause damage to the end product. Doesn't that sound like your life? Doesn't it sound like Jesus is doing something at the wheel? Something at the refine, like the refiner at the fire? Doesn't it sound like Jesus, the potter, is looking at the clay? And the scripture tells us he makes sure everything comes out that is impure so that when the result of the end factor is remain, everything will be considered good. 
we must remember today as we go through step one in our season that God is the refiner. God is the person who is sitting in the seasons of our life, even in exile, cleaning the impure stuff pulling out the pesticides, pulling out the impurities, pulling out all the things that would harm the end result. What is your end result today? Your end result is your destiny. Your end result is the purpose of your purpose. Your end result is the purpose of the vision given for your life. God wants at the end of your life, that legacy, that destiny, that purpose would have been fulfilled without anything damaging it. So he sits and he goes, through and he begins to wash you and sometimes washing is uncomfortable sometimes trying to get dirt out of stuff is uncomfortable you've got to be shake you've got to have water poured on you so if you don't like cold water you may cringe when you feel the water come upon you you've got to go through some uncomfortable seasons but I want to remind you can I tell you something today greater is coming step two Step two for the olive is the squeezing and the grinding. This process of the olive is when the olive is actually mashed. It has to release its ownership to the seed. Isn't that awesome? It has to be removed from the pulp. The, 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 the olive must begin to not look like itself anymore, but it shall resemble the end product. Step two causes us to lose our former identity, what you came with, the things that you held on to, the things that made you, you. And it is in step two, we put on an identity of Christ. It is in step two, we put on the identity of the finished product. And it is at this stage many run. It is at this stage in exile many feel to give up. We feel to walk away. But I want to tell you something. Greater is coming. Don't leave step two of your process. It is going to squeeze you. It's going to grind you. But you've got to stick in there until it's completed because it must be torn. The olive must be torn apart to be placed into its final product. So the good stuff has to come out by the press, by the squeezing, by the grinding. And that is the only way it is found. It's, it, it has to be pulled apart. It has to be squeezed in order for it to leave its natural habitat. Today, you might be feeling squeezed. And you might be saying, but God, I'm doing all the right things. Why am I still being squeezed? I've come by to tell you God has a plan for you, a finished product, a, a, a future of expected end. And that expected end cannot flourish with your former identity of who you think you are. It must become who God says you are. So he's bursting you. He's squeezing you. He's getting the good stuff out of you. He's changing the, your perspective in life. And he's giving you a new identity. He's identifying you with the blood. He's identi identifying you with the kingdom. He's identifying you with heaven. He's identi identifying you with his inheritance. He's identifying you with his identity of a father to a son to a daughter. Hallelujah. So you must go through that. And it is in that process the olive becomes a pace. So it loses its identity. It loses its composure completely. It loses its form and it becomes a pace. So it came in round and now it's flat. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Um, Sometimes we come to God so whole in our own ideas. We come to God believing we have everything to offer to God in the right package until God makes our life look like peace. And we blame the devil. But it's really God at the wheel, trying to have you lose your habitat so that you can gain his. Trying to have you lose your citizenship for earth and give you a citizenship of the kingdom. Trying to have you trade your identity of the earth to gain an identity of the kingdom. I hope you are hearing me today because your greater is coming. The third step. 
my God. The third step is the pressing. This is the step, however, we run. <laughs> the two steps before, we scream and squeal and push and some, some, some get fed up, frustrated, but we still stay. It is at the third stage, the stage where we are close to the finish line, we run. This is called the stage of the pressing. It is the stage where there is, an, there is a certain equipment that has to be used on the olive that must take the pace of the olive that was created in stage two and pull oil from the pace. It is in this stage you are pulled. It is in this stage you are stretched. It is in this stage the pressing presses you until oil comes out. Now that's the great stuff because this is your real true product. Your real product is the oil that was wrapped up and bundled up in the flesh. Doesn't it sound ironic? that while we are in the flesh, we do not receive anything of the spirit in the flesh, but in the spirit, there is something bigger and real and more powerful on the inside of us, but it wouldn't show up in the flesh on its own. It must be washed, it must be squeezed, and it must be pressed. And it is in that pressing the flesh and the spirit comes to the fore. The real beauty, the real intention, the fortified man shows up in the spirit, the oil. It is in this process, the olive really sees his or her true nature, his intended calculated product, the oil. My friend, if you are in this season where you are feeling to run, where you are feeling to give up, where you are feeling to walk out on that marriage or walk out of that ministry, I came by to tell you in the nick of time with a diagnosis from your heavenly father, greater is coming. He said, for I know the plans I have for you. I don't know who you are and you're looking at this just in the nick of time. I want to tell you, don't turn that television off. Don't turn your air off. But this is the right prescription for whatever situation you're going through. That our Heavenly Father, Abba, Dada, Yeshua, Yahweh, He's saying to you right now in that place of affliction, greater is coming. Now, after this third uh, step is complete and the uh, oil is pulled out, we have what we call the final product, where the oil is taken from where it was processed, and it is now product or placed in a bottle for production, for work. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? That after the oil is drawn out, now, the oil could be worked. Sometimes we want to work with our being process, but God requires processing for the work to be effective. Now the oil, when it is finished and it is placed in a bottle and it is now called the production area now, where you can now market it across the world so it can now work in the lives of men and women on earth. So you can now work it in your food, work it in your health, drink it daily, and so many other uses the olive oil is used. It's worked on every Sunday which in churches, using as oil to pray for the sick, uh, the destitute, those who are broken. It's a point of contact. It's an emblem of the anointing. So, so the oil is now fit for use because it had, has gone through all its processing. So it can now be valuable on the shelf. So it can now be valuable in your home. So it can now be valuable in the pastor's hand. So it can now be valuable in your pot, in your restaurant, in your body. 
I know being in exile or feeling banished is never a nice place to be. But the process is going to cost you a lot. But the production will satisfy you. I've never seen the virgin olive oil turn back and said, the process was a waste of time. The price you pay for it on the shelf is worth its processing. Today, you might be thinking to yourself, I've heard this word before, pastor. I've heard all these good things, but I just feel like quitting. Can I tell you something today? Greater is coming. You stay put and let God do a work. He told the Israelites who were at that time exiled, he said, call on my name, and that day you will find me. He said, seek me with your whole heart, and I will be found. Today, whatever your process might be, stage one, stage two, or stage three, call on his name. Seek him, and he said to them, he will be found. My God. Today, when we think about the goodness of God, we think about his greatness. So many are going through the stages like the olive today. You are being shamed, squeezed, pressed for separation. And it has not been easy, but God has sent me today in a simple word like this to remind you, greater is coming. I feel like praying for you as I close today because in these seasons, they are the most important seasons of our lives. And if it is not attended to with the right prescription, we can die prematurely in the process. Father, I thank you. Let us pray. I thank you for every child, every person, every adult that is viewing this word at this time. And Father, Lord God, whatever their seasons may be, Father, I thank you for peace and I thank you for the comfort of your word today. I know the plans I have for you. Father, I pray, oh Lord God, that that woman, that man, that mother, that father, that wife, that husband, that child. Oh, Lord God, they are going to leave feeling rejuvenated. They are going to leave feeling empowered and revived. Father, I pray, oh Lord God, that they are going to start to speak this word over their destiny and over their season. Greater is coming. Father, I thank you for turning it around and planting their feet on solid ground. Father, I thank you, O Lord God, for lifting up their head above the water. Father, I thank you, O Lord God, for causing them to stand still and know that the Lord is there. Father, I thank you, O Lord God, for the end product. As I thank you for the processing, I thank you for the end product of their life, that they would add value to the kingdom of God, that they will be a force to be reckoned with and a force of influence right here on earth. Father, I thank you, O oh Lord God, that they will not abandon the mission. They will not abandon the season. They will not abandon the product. But, O oh Lord God, they would stay through thanking you and finding you and giving you all the honor, glory, thanks, and praise. O oh Lord God, remembering your word today, for I know the plans I have for you. Greater is coming. Father, Lord God, I place them into your care today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today, I thank you so much for viewing this word today. And I pray that God will continue to bless you. Until we meet again, stay strong. Thank you.